get started. Amen. Amen. So today I have the pleasure and the honor of standing before everybody and preach the word of God. It's my first time and I know God meant it. So um, a little word. So I had two tests to take this week. I was very overwhelmed, but on Saturday, I had another test yesterday. And before, on my way to the test center, because it's a registry exam for the state, and on my way there, I, and welcome to all my Facebook friends who are watching. Hopefully you guys can hear me well. So on my way to the test center, I told myself, I want to preach. I actually, I, nobody asked me to preach. I just said I wanted to preach. And look, when I made it home, I had I got home and I I did pass my exam. Glory be to God. And um, and I received a request if I could preach. So I literally came up with this yesterday. So today I want to share with everybody the word that God gave me is, um, let me take my notes, sorry. I spent more time trying to fix my Facebook Live. So um, know my identity. So since Thursday, um, the Lord has been speaking to me about knowing your identity in Christ. Who are you? And why is it important for you to know who you are in Christ? So, um, I'll give you guys an example. So, for example, we are in America. You need your ID, your driver's license, as, uh, as a document to represent yourself, your ID. If you want to get a job, you have to show your ID. You want to fly locally, you don't need a passport to fly all over America, but you need to show your ID. You need your ID to drive, because if you drive without your driver's license, you are driving illegally. So you need your ID to do a lot of things. And your ID is what identifies you in all those places, let's say in America. Your ID identifies you as an American, as a citizen of that place, that you have the right to do whatever you're doing or act, to have access to the things that you're doing. So your ID gives you that access. And that is why your ID is important. So same thing with the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, we all need an ID. And it's a spiritual ID. And if you don't have it, that's why we end up in situations and we cannot stand strong because we don't have an ID. We don't know who we are. We don't have an identification. What does an ID do for us? In this world, our ID, it gives us privileges, just like I mentioned some of them. It distinguishes you from a foreigner. So if, um, if you're driving around and you don't have a driver's license, number one, you get in trouble. Now, and the, if they found out you are, you are, basically you are classified as a foreigner if they don't find an ID on you. And that's what gets you in trouble because you're not supposed to be on the road or the American road driving without a, your driver's license. And so, also, it gives you access. So, if you want, I know this is a bad example, but people here, if you go and buy alcohol, stuff like that, you have to show your ID. So, some people have access to those things, but in the spirit, as children of God, we have access to better things. That's why we need our ID. And then we have freedom. When you have your ID, your driver's license, you're not worried if you're on the road driving anyhow. You know, if they stop you, you're gonna show them this is my driver's license. I have the right to be on the road. I have the right to be driving. If you go to fly 
let's say you're going from one state to another, you show your ID, they won't send you home. They won't stop you because, you know, I live here. This is my identification. I have these privileges. So you have that freedom. So same thing, like I said, with the, with the kingdom of God, it gives us privileges. It gives us access. It gives us freedom. And it gives us authority. So um, why is it important? For us to um, to have all this access or to have the ID the identification in Christ because many times the devil comes to lie to us he would lie he would speak lies into us he would tell us things for example if you're going through a situation the devil will tell you things that will wear you down. He will speak depressing things into your ears until you break down and you give up. But if you know who you are in Christ, you know your identification, and you can stand and say, this is who I am in God, and depart from me. From me. Like the Bible says, uh, Jesus told the devil, get thee behind me, Satan. Even though Satan was coming up to Jesus and say here jump off and the Lord will save you it turned these stones into uh, into bread and eat but Jesus say um, the word he, Jesus referred to the word that the word of God says so same thing Jesus knew his identification in, Christ, in God that he cannot be moved by the things that the devil is speaking to him same thing with us if we know our identity we will not be moved just by anything because when you see something come you will perceive when you have your identification you also have discernment so when you see something that is not supposed to be there you can identify it and say you are not a citizen of where i am at so if the devil is speaking negativity you will be like in our in in our realm we don't speak that way so you're not from here and you can bind it and cast it away but if you are not if you don't know your identity you don't know whose you are anything that comes to you it is easy for it to penetrate through you okay okay so um i'll skip some of the stuff I wrote and so let's get started so we have so many people in the Bible who are good examples of proving their identity we have David David knew his identity in God David would do something but he knew how to access God and also one important thing about knowing your identity in Christ is that if you know your identity in Christ you know your right to your father you can go and access and have access to him and you know that you will receive from him and he will not turn you back same thing same thing with David same thing with David uh, same thing with um, I wanted to give an example of the prodigal son the prodigal son the son who took all that he's he wanted his wealth. He wanted everything that um, his inheritance from his father and said, give me my inheritance. I want to go and enjoy my life. So he took all his inheritance and moved on. Went, squandered all his money and everything he had and became broke. And then when he realized he was eating with animals, he said, in my father's home, even servants have access to good things. Let me go back. And here's the thing. The prodigal son was hit with guilt. Guilt. Because at that moment, he, he had doubt of whose he was. And he said, even if I go back in my father's house, let me go back and be uh, even a servant. I know I'll be treated well. So he also had an identity problem until he went 
back and his father assured him same way our God assures us that we are his children regardless of what we've done if we turn back from whatever we did or wherever we were that we are his and if we know our identity we will not be uh, soaking in every other lie that the devil is telling us so um, let's all go to the book of Judges I told you guys that um, David was a good example we have uh, Mordecai was another good example we have Esther we have so many people in the Bible who have who knew their identity in Christ and were willing to push through and get whatever they wanted from God but my favorite of them all and I had planned actually I planned my sermon based on um, talking about you know the popular people in the Bible like David Esther all those but this morning the Lord at 5 a.m. the Lord spoke to me and gave me Gideon and Gideon I love Gideon you guys have no idea so Gideon chapter 6 yeah in uh, the book of Judges chapter 6 from verse 11 I will read now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree which was in Oprah which belonged to Joshua the Abiezrite while his son Gibeon threshed wheat in the wine in the wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites and the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him the Lord is with you you mighty man of valor so the angel of the Lord met Gideon while he was uh, he was cultivating their uh, wheat and trying to hide it from the Midianite and the Midianite were really what happened was the children of Israel sinned so much before the Lord they sinned they disobeyed the Lord that God was upset with them that at, uh, when God became upset because they were also worshiping idols so when God decided to uh, punish them he allowed the army of the Midianites to go against them so when the army of the Midianites went against them the uh, the army of the Midianite started taking destroying their crops the the Midianite would wait when their crops have grown and destroyed they would take things from them and just make their life miserable and that's what the uh, that's what the devil does so here on verse 12 the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him the Lord is with you you mighty man of valor and listen to what Gideon answered Gideon said to him oh my Lord if the Lord is with us why then has all this happened to us and where are all the miracles which our father told us about saying did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt but now the Lord has forsaken us and deliver us into the hands of the Midianites let me keep going on verse 14 then the Lord turned to him and said go in this might of yours and you shall save Israel the hand of the Midianites from the hands of the Midianite have have no have I not sent you sorry so the despite what Gideon said that if the Lord truly cares for us why are we going through all these things then the angel of the Lord still uh, still uh, speak to Gideon and say have I not sent you so on verse 15 he said so he said to him oh my Lord how can I save Israel indeed my clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I am the least in my father's house amen. amen 
Gideon responded to the angel of the Lord that he is weak and his clan his clan is is the weakest in Manasseh and he is the least in his father's house see God is no respecter of men amen, amen. and since we are talking about knowing our identity in Christ when the angel of the Lord revealed himself to Gideon the angel of the Lord said to him you mighty man of valor but Gideon knows himself as the least even in his father's house despite the fact that in the tribe of Manasseh his clan is the weakest they have no word they have no say in anything they can't defend themselves they are the weakest despite that in his own father's house he is the least of them all same thing with uh you can relate this to david when uh samuel went to to anoint a king for israel he went and he looked at all those men who looked defeated they were strong they were tall and everything and God said no. But God went and told him the least of them all. The least of them all. So where we're going with this is even if you feel like you are the least of them all, listen to what God says because your identity should be in Christ. The only way you can overcome any and everything is if you know who you are in Christ. But Gideon did not know who he was in Christ. Gideon knew, Gideon knew that he was the least of them all, from the weakest clan. So he, he knew he didn't have any of that. But the angel of the Lord called him, you mighty man of valor. Can anybody believe that? See, the way we see ourselves, we see ourselves totally different. When God is seeing us right now, everybody, God is seeing you powerful. God knows you have the authority to speak to any and everything in your life and bring them into order. But we don't see it because we are walking by sight and not by faith. By faith, by faith, by faith we can, we can move my, by faith, faith here's faith faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of god if you open the bible and the bible tell you you are beautiful and you forget that you go and look in the mirror and you listen to what the devil is telling you that you are not good enough but the only way you can defeat the devil is when you say you speak to yourself you look at yourself and you say the bible say i am beautiful and i am created in the image of the almighty god the creator of heaven and earth the only god the supreme god the god who lives who sits between the cherubims and they are crying out holy 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 the same god that to him I am nothing but an end. But he gives me power and authority. And he calls me into his, by his name. He, also, he calls me by my name. He knows me. If God knows me, I am beautiful. I am powerful. I have authority to speak things into existence in the mighty name of Jesus. So Gideon did not know that. But the angel of the Lord knew what was in Gideon. The angel of the Lord knew if I, if I make him see, if I make him see, if he only knew, if he only knew he was a mighty man of valor, he will not, he will not be this weak. He will, but the devil, the devil does that to us. The devil tried to make us feel like we're no good because actually the truth is if you look in the book of revelation it says in the last days that we will be like that that small things that was the devil that was what was driving us crazy the devil is that ugly small thing we are beautiful we are powerful we are what god says we are and if we take every word and run with it nobody and nothing can stop us because we speak our, our lives into existence 
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. So, um, to save time, I will not read all that. So, I will explain. So, after the angel of the Lord spoke to Gideon, if you guys have time, please go home and read Gideon chapter 6. It will teach you a lot. The children of Israel sinned. And God showed himself to the weakest person. Because sometimes it is God loves to find people at their weakest point. Because when you are weak, you are open to receive. You are empty. You are open to receive. But sometimes, like the Bible said, the first will be the last and the last will be the first. So the first are those people who think they're good they they don't need god they got everything under control but at your weakest point the ones who don't know their identity those are god the bible say that christ did not die for the good people christ died for the sinners those who are still in need of him those who still don't know their identity because if they knew their identity they will be on the other side so gideon so gideon uh the angel okay if i go and come back i'm gonna bring some offerings and put them over here and uh i want i want when i come back that you're still here so i can build an altar and offer to you that way i will know that you are surely god that you are speaking to me see when we are weak again gideon after the angel of the lord accepted his offering the angel of the lord disappeared and gideon again still he asked god to prove himself again and gideon asked god to prove himself again confirmation after confirmation after confirmation the only reason you will be asking for confirmation after confirmation after confirmation is when you're weak when you don't really trust yourself and the only reason you cannot you do not trust yourself is because you do not know who you are in god because if you knew who you were in god when you receive a god a word from god you will move with it you will move with it so gideon kept asking for confirmation confirmation and confirmation so the lord said I am going, and I saw so many times uh, from uh, the beginning, God sent the uh, children of Israel under the punishment of the Midianites for seven years. And then Gideon went and offered uh, bulls after several offerings and offerings. He offered several of them for, seven, for uh, a bull of seven years old. And uh, by the way, if you guys didn't know, Gideon ended up having 70 children, seven zero children. But anyway, there is this prophetic number about seven. And so in Gideon chapter seven, that's when God started moving Gideon to, to put together his army. Uh, God told Gideon, now go after he asked for confirmation after confirmation because he was still weak he's not used to this he has to go through you know the furnace he has to go through something in order to build himself so um after he had an idea he had confirmation he saw god's hands and he was like okay and god was patient see god is patient with us when when we're willing to do what he asks us to do when we're willing to know who we are in him because the only reason the only reason god would want us to know who we are in him is because he wants to bless us he knows see if you are not a citizen of america you cannot just come over here and say i want to collect social security you'll be crazy you cannot come in america from anywhere you are and say yeah i want to collect my social security and relax no you cannot do that you will be crazy same thing you cannot just do whatever you do and step into 
a God's realm and ask God to bless you whenever you feel like you feel, I mean, you're not praying to him. You're not in connection with him. And you just show up one day and say, oh God, I want a big house. I want this. And you don't have the relationship. And the only way you can have a relationship is you have to know who are you in the relationship? Who are you in the relationship? Are you the child? Are you the father? Are you the mother? Exactly. You cannot just, you know, come into my house, open the door, and say, I want inheritance. From where? From who? We know you. You know? You have to have an ID. I have to be like, oh yeah, I know you. You're my sister. You know? You're my friend. I know you. So, um, so before we move on to the whole army, I want to go to... Um, why, 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 why didn't they know their identity? Why was Israel suffering so much? Why didn't they know their identity? And if we go back to chapter 6 from verse 1, the Bible tells us that the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. He, this is very important to know. When you sin, when you sin before the Lord, the Lord says he does not separate us from himself. He always longs for us to be closer to him. The only thing that keeps us away from God is our sins. The only thing that separates us from the Lord Jesus is our sins. But the Lord is always available for all of us. Always available to receive us whenever we turn away from our sins. But the children of Israel, after they left Egypt, they gone through all sort of stuff. Despite every trial that they went through, they still did not learn. Every new generation knew how to sin because of the land they were in. See, the Bible tells us that I send you to that land. Go and prosper. Go and flourish. But do not, do not adapt to their, to their character, their behavior, the way they do things. Because it is not pleasing unto the Lord. But pray for them. Yes, marry them, live with them. But do not be like them. Because they worship idols. But you are set apart. You are a chosen people, a chosen generation of the Lord Most High. You are not like them, so you shouldn't be like them. But the devil, our witness, try to make it, the devil try to make it beautiful that you would take a, a, a statue. Now, I want everybody to think of this. Where is your identity? Imagine this. I, I go and I chop off a big tree. I chop off a big tree and I spend days, weeks, and I curve it into any image of anything I like and I set it over there. And I come and I worship it. I have made a YouTube video about this. Anything I make with my hand, anything created with man hand, Anything a man can imagine, whether technology, whether anything, if you are still, if you are sitting and worshiping anything that can be made with man hand, anything that can be painted, created, and set over there, whatever it is, it is an idol. How dare can that be a god? Our god is an invisible god. He's a mighty moving god. He's a God. He's a God. You cannot see him. If you see him, you, you, will, you will die. But here, after Gideon saw the angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Gideon was afraid. Gideon said, oh God, I'm going to die. And the angel of the Lord assured him and said, do not be afraid for you will not perish. That's the God we serve. He he speaks. Anything you create that cannot speak cannot be your God. 
And if you are worshiping it, then you don't know your identity. Because you cannot just come and build something with your hand and worship it. You cannot. It just doesn't make sense. Okay? So you, if you know your identity, if I can build this thing with my hand, I am the powerful one. I am the one with the brain. I am the one with everything in me. So why would I sit down and worship this thing? Yes, I love it. It's beautiful. I made it. It's beautiful. I can set it up somewhere, but I'm not going to bow down before it. I have to bow down to anything more powerful than me. Any, any other supreme power that moves me. That is who and what I will bow down to. Amen. So know your identity. Hallelujah. So, um, uh, so now we'll move into the precious part. Um, Gideon chapter 7. So I will not spend my time reading, but I'll explain to you what happened. So in Gideon chapter 7, the Lord told after, you know, building Gideon's self-confidence. See, when you have... When you know your identity, you become confident in yourself. You start moving. You start believing in yourself. Then you start knowing what you might be capable of doing. Amen? Amen. There is a joke that goes on in our house. Uh, my house. Everybody make jokes about me that Lorraine can do everything. I never say no. Ask me, ask me anything. And yes, the Lord has used my attitude to bring me before kings, to bring me before rulers, because I am obedient. If you ask me anything, you ask me if I know how to build an airplane, I will say yes, and I'll go find somebody to build it, and I'll be a middleman, and I'll take the money. I don't say no. I don't say no. Yes. No. So, yeah, in the house, they always make fun of me. Um talking about Lorian can do everything you ask me I can build a table I'm over there building do you know how many businesses I've built and some of them don't exist because I'm always running from one thing to another but I never stop I never say no okay so now God decided to send Gideon to go fight so Gideon you know when you're weak like um when God asked me to start my business, I started thinking, I'm like, I'm going to need these people. I'm going to need these financial people. Because I really don't even know much about the business I was starting. So when I started thinking all that, God sat quiet and watched me. And uh, the only reason is sometimes you become weak. You start doubting yourself. And that's when you allow the devil to come in and the devil is telling you, Oh, you might not. And look, let me tell you, if the whole world knows your business and your business crushes, that is embarrassing. So, yeah, the whole world knows my business. My business is fun. I work hard. I, I sleep two hours a day. Every day I work hard. I had two tests this week. Also doing my business stuff, everything. I'm doing more than one thing and I'm trying to uh do a youtube channel and i'm not stopping but i'm trusting god to bring me through everything so whatever you want to do you have the power to be successful you have the power to get every and anything you want under the sun you have the power to get the spouse of your choice and that is true i believe that i know that and I said it. Mark my word. And everything, every blessing you get is at the size of your faith. Your faith determines the size of your blessing. I, I posted this on my Facebook. However big your faith is, if your faith is shaking, your blessing is going to come shaking. If your faith is solid, hey Jesus. I don't want to go into my business, but anyway, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Amen. So let's go to Gideon. So God told Gideon, 
uh, put an army together and you will go up and fight against the Midianite. Gideon went and brought about 33,000 men, strong men, 33,000. Now, the Midianite were, were like the Chaldeans. The Chaldeans are uh, one of the powerful people bar, back in the, in the days. You know, back in uh, the time of King Nebuchadnezzar, those were powerful armies, powerful nations, kind of like America today. So the Midianites were powerful. They came in multitudes. But he, so he went and he was able to put together 33,000 men, strong men. And God was like, no, there are too many. Um, so God, uh, God told them to uh, pick some out. So he chopped some out and he was left from 33 down to, he was left with 10,000. And then 10,000 men. I told you that at 33, the Midianites were mo in multitudes, more than them. But then at 10,000, God told Gideon, there's still too many. There's still too many. See, God fights for us. God does everything for us. If we trust him because we know who we are in him, we will not doubt anything he tells us, any instructions he gives us. There were instructions that the Lord had given me. Like I said, I would go before people. I would go before CEOs of big companies. And I would stand over before them. And I'll tell them I know everything. And they believe it. Why? Because I said it. I said it. And the God who pushes me to go through, he makes it. He, he softens their heart. And they believe me. And I end up doing it. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. God told him 10,000 men are still too much. So he, God told him, now go to the stream. And uh, the men that takes water, those who drink water like dogs, get them out. And take the one that drink water with, uh, I guess, their hand. So the number, the number went down to 300. 300 men left. Talk about scary. If I'm pretty sure I'm going to be honest. I'll be scared. 300? 300, that's scary. You better have some real faith in God. Some real faith in God to be able to, uh, you know, go through with this. So, yeah, Gideon was afraid. But Gideon was like, he'll follow God's instructions. So God, after Gideon sent all the other people away, the 300 men stayed. And God gave him instructions to surround the camps of the Midianites. And in the middle, the middle of the night, to cry out to the God of Gideon. To cry out to God and Gideon. So they, they spoke out loud for God and for Gideon. In order for those 300 men to say that they had to believe God. They had to believe in Gideon. That means at that time, Gideon was starting to know who he was in God. And because he knew who he was in God, even though his army was so small, the, the 300 men who knew they were going toward multitude, thousands of, of men of valor from the enemy side, they still believed. They still believed. And they went as a small army, believing they were weak. And as they got over there, as they got over there, once they shouted and, and blew their trumpets, the enemies, God brought confusion on the enemies. So the enemies started uh, running crazy and they thought the Israelites were amongst them out of their tent. So they started running against each other in the middle of the night killing each other thinking they were killing the Israelites and the rest of them ran back to their uh, to their nation and some of those who were running back 
Gideon was able to pursue them and destroy them. Hallelujah. That is, that is why we need to know our identity. Gideon is a good example of how we build our identity. And Gideon did something very special. Uh, even though I made fun of it, I was like, he needed confirmation after confirmation after confirmation. But Gideon brought a sacrifice to God. When you bring a sacrifice to God, it is not always about money. It could be a sacrifice of praise. A sacrifice, Gideon was showed humility. Gideon was humble. When Gideon stood before the Lord, Gideon was willing. So uh, when, you, when you go sacrifice to the Lord, let me tell you the truth about sacrifice. There are some people who feel like they can just go in church and throw offering in a basket and move on. There is so much more to a sacrifice that you bring before the Lord. If your spirit is not aligned with the spirit of the Lord, you are wasting your time. You are wasting your money. You have, when you take your sacrifice, even sacrifices of praise. You know, some people in church, when praise and worship is singing, some people just stand over there. You want to look cute and everything. Here's the thing. When we go before the judge in the last day, you will stand by yourself. Your church will not stand with you and say we were in church together. What did you do for the Lord? When you are praising the Lord, you... The Bible said praises go up and blessings come down. How can you expect to be blessed if your praises didn't go up as an offering unto the Lord? So you have to know your identity. And if you know your identity, I know my identity in Christ. That's why I sing anyhow. That's why I dance anyhow before the Lord. Because I know who I'm dancing to. Is the one who gave me my identity and the one who made me as strong as I am today. Amen. Amen. So we should, it is crucial that we know our identity. So today, before I close, I would like everyone, I want to give everyone this challenge. I had so many uh, chapters, but I'll post them uh, in the Bible. But I wanted to keep it short. But I want, I want everybody to, to um, in order to, uh, if you guys can write these down, these are some of the uh, chapters that will help you identify who you are in the Lord. We have Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Consul, can you hand me my cell phone? Sorry. That way I can just read them all. And Sorry if I preach before then I'll have myself organized. Okay, so I am going to read over some of the few chapters that I wrote down. That um, there were so many chapters, so many chapters, so I'll just go through a few of them. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, I'll just read them if you want to write them down because there are so many chapters in the Bible that will tell you who you are in Christ. And if you can stand by those verses, the, uh, just like they say, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The more you read the, those words, the more you practice them, the more, the stronger you are in God. So, uh, so I will read Romans 8 17 it says now if we are children then we are heirs heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ 
if indeed we share in his suffering, in order that we may also share in his glory. Hallelujah. And my favorite one, First Peter, First Peter chapter 2, from verse 9 through 10, it says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into wonderful, wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you are feeling like you are not beautiful, then you should read more of the Songs of Solomon. I know the first time I read Songs of Solomon, it was very uncomfortable for me. I'm just, I don't know what I was reading. I was like, oh my Lord. But, uh, <laughs> so Songs of Solomon chapter four, verse one, it says, how beautiful you are, my darling. Oh, how beautiful. Your eyes behind your veil are, are dogs. Your hair is like a flock of goats. I don't know about that. Descending from the hills of Gilead. But anyway, this is hard. <laughs> and then uh, verse 7 says, You are altogether beautiful, my darling. There is no flaw in you. This is our Lord speaking to us. There is no flaw in us. We are beautifully, wonderfully made. And if you want to confirm about citizenship, then you should go in Philippians chapter 3 from verse 20 to 21. But we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives. And we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our savior. He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his own using the same power which he will bring everything under his control philippians chapter 3 verse 20 to 21 and to show you how powerful we are first corinthians chapter 6 verse 3 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 3 tells us, Do you not know that we will judge angels? How much more things of this life? If you have the power to judge angels, it says, do you not know you have, you will judge angels? If we can judge angels, how powerful are we? You know, sometimes when I pray, I, when I need something, I always say, I charge my angels. I charge the angels of the Lord to go and get me this. I charge the angels of the Lord. Because as we are like spoiled kids in the spoiled house of the Lord, our royal home. Whatever we need, we charge the angels of the Lord because they're there to work for us. And in the end, as heirs, royal children of the Most High God, we will judge the angels. That's how powerful we are. So if you know you are that powerful, you don't need to be weak. Amen? So, um, as I will share just those for now. So, in the end, I want to remind everyone that it is sin that keeps us away from the love of God. It is sin that keeps us from knowing who we are in God. So it is very good that we repent. We repent of our ways. We sin daily. The Bible says we sin daily because God knows. We sin by just when when you're driving and somebody cut you off yes somebody cut me off when i was driving here and it wasn't good so 
we sin. I sinned before I got here. So we have to continually repent and say, God, forgive me for this. Because we want when the Lord comes that we are ready. And we want to be a good image. So the more, yes, we're working on our self-control. But we have some shortcomings that we need to fix. And until then, we need to repent. We need to repent so that God, when you repent, God feels welcome into your atmosphere and will reveal things to you. And um, yesterday, I had shared with my mom that um, I was walking in the house and um, I was going back and forth in the hallway. I don't know what I was doing. I think I was fixing myself, about to go take my test. So I'll go from one side of the house to the other. And as I was walking, I was like in my own little mood. And then at a point, I felt so powerful for it in a second. I felt so a sudden, like I, I felt so powerful, so fearless. And then I heard a loud voice, a strong voice, like a man voice. Uh, you know, all these um, good movies we watch, especially like American action movies, you, these men with deep voice like in all this action movie and it said Zoran. He told me Zoran and I was like whoa. I'm like who is Zoran? What is Zoran? I heard that and I ran I ran to my favorite dictionary Google it's so messy and I look up Zoran. I speak Swahili I understand I know how some African languages sound like, but I've never heard of Zoran in any African language. I speak English, I don't think we have any Zoran. So I didn't know what God was telling me, but I heard Zoran. So when I ran into my room and I looked up what Zoran meant, it has good and bad meaning. But the first meaning that came up when I wanted to know, uh, cause it gave me choices. The Russian used that name, the Jewish used that name, many people use that name. But the name, it means dawn, daybreak, daybreak, like in the morning when the sun is going up, it means that. So immediately when I saw that, I got excited and I, the Holy Spirit started talking to me after that. It was a message from God telling me, it's a new beginning, it's a new day. It's a new day, so we have to get our identity in line. We have to know who we are, because there is access now in the spirit. There is, the Lord is about to do good things, but the only way he can do good things in your life is if you are in alignment, if you know who you are, if he sends you out right now, don't shake, just stand and move. And that is what God, I felt he was talking to me about when he told me that word. I was so excited when I found out the meaning. I was just like, it was beautiful. I felt like I was in a movie. I shaked for one moment. I was like, Zoran. And I was literally, I was passing by Dorka's bedroom when I just heard Zoran. And the voice was so loud, so deep that I could 